All right, welcome back. We are going to do a little recording lesson today, and we're going to use the Volt 276 from Universal Audio as basically the centerpiece. I'll take you through all the features. Uh, we'll talk about the software bundle they include. And I wanted to point this at you guitar players who are maybe thinking about recording on your computer or even your iOS device, which you can do with this box. Lots of great onboard features. Again, a software bundle will get you virtual drums, uh, guitar plugins, all that kind of stuff. I'll show you all that stuff as we're laying our tracks down. Uh, and again, this is perfect for uh, if you're writing songs, if you're demoing songs, you could again, plug it in your phone or your iPad and get great quality stuff. So I think what you'll really see is how quickly I was able to put all this stuff down, get great sounds with what they include and make a pretty fun, easy recording. All right, so let's jump into the session. I'll walk you through all the parts and I'll see you at the end. All right, so before we record any guitars, bass, or vocals, we need a drum track. And for this song, I chose to use the software that UA includes from this really cool company called UJAM. This is a killer sounding a drum, uh, virtual drummer essentially is what they call it. Great, uh, great drum sounds, cool drum grooves. And what you do is you just take it and I'm gonna audition one right there. And I will drag that groove into my session. Hit play. There you go. Now for you Mac users, you can hit Apple D, duplicate a bunch of them, and you have them the same loop over and over again. Now there's plenty of other loops in there, fills, endings, intros, different drum sounds. You can go crazy. I would encourage you to watch some tutorials on this software for sure. But it's this virtual drummer deep from UJAM. Really, really cool. All right, so we got our drum track. Let's jump in and do some acoustics. All right, so I got my drum track down, and what I'm gonna do now is put a couple acoustic tracks down. I'll put one on the left side and the right side and really kind of build the framework of the tune. But before I get into that, I should tell you I'm playing my old 2007 Martin M36. This is a great mic that I'm really enjoying. It's an LA220 from Loughton Microphones. They make some great stuff, really, really friendly for the budget, but sounds killer, especially when you add it to stuff like the Volt. And why does it make a microphone sound even better? Well, it's got this cool thing going on on the preamp stage where you can kind of give it the normal sort of classic, you know, clean preamp sound, if you will. It sounds pretty good. And I, you know, if you don't know what a preamp is, we have to get the microphone uh, gained up. It's like turning your gain control up uh, on your amplifier. We need to give some power to this microphone to hear it. But different preamps, like different guitar pedals, have different characteristics. This is a clean one. And a subtle difference will happen when I hit the vintage switch. Now it's probably pretty tough to hear, but I hear some more clarity in the highs. And it's more robust overall, but we're gonna leave that switch on. Now there's also built-in compression to each channel of the 276, and there's varying degrees of it. We're not gonna use it for this particular track, but we will on the next one. Cause I'll be doing some low stuff like And I don't want it to get it too in your face. I want it to be subtle, all right? So why not play that? We'll play it against the track and then we'll come back and we'll add another one, same guitar, different guitar part, little different treatment on the Volt. All right, let's try it against the track. Here we go. All right, so we got a basic acoustic rhythm down. Let's add a picking part to it and create a nice little wide stereo acoustic field. Now for the previous track, I didn't use any of the onboard compression, but we're going to want to do it here. Now let's talk a little bit about compression in sort of the most basic terms, particularly if you're new to recording, which you might be if you're watching this video. Compression just takes the sounds that you're playing quietly and brings them up to a volume, and then takes the sounds that you're playing loudly and brings them down, thus compressing them. And it's really a great tool for not only vocals, but uh, finger picking guitar, bass players love it, and a whole host of other instruments as well. It just makes everything kind of sit evenly in your mix. Now we didn't do it on the first one because we wanted it to be a little looser feeling and not as in your face, but we're going to want these picking parts to be really robust and just jumping through the speakers. Okay, so we have several different types or iterations of this compression on the 276. They've kind of given you like an easy button. We can go through and just kind of toggle to, there we go, vocal. And that's gonna add a lot of compression. You can even hear it on the, my voice coming through the guitar mic. We can go to guitar, 
fast, and then off. So what we're going to do, let me just play a little bit here and listen to it. With varying degrees of compression. And then off. So you'll say, well, it just got louder. It made everything louder. Yes, that's true. But what it does is it's really kind of evening out my sound and great for this kind of thing. So I'm going to dial up. Ah, there it is. The fast compressor. Uh, I felt that that worked the best for this track. Uh, we're going to lay down another part and then we'll move on to some bass and electric guitars. All right, let's try it. All right, we got our acoustic tracks down. Let's throw some bass on this. And I'm just taking my Fender standard reissue P bass, going into channel one of Volt, and I have both buttons engaged, both the vintage and the 76 compressor. Uh, and it's got a you know pretty good sound dialed up. Right, sounds like a bass, that's all you ever want. So let's take those switches off and see what we lose. So we'll turn the compressor off and we'll turn the vintage switch off. So you lose the definition, you lose all the punch, and that's what can really uh, benefit your bass when you throw these switches on. So let's do it again. And we go right to vocal. When you come out of off, you have to kind of toggle through all of them. But I like this guitar setting for bass. It sounds pretty good. And that's what you should do. Just use your ears. There's not one that says bass, so you gotta pick one. Do one that sounds good. All right, so let's sweeten our bass tone even more by adding a bass amplifier plugin to the mix. Now, you get a handful of plugins in the software bundle when you get Volt, and this is one of them. You'll be able to get not only the Ampeg B15, but a handful of other really cool amps and stuff too, which we'll use later. So, when you hear a bass through a B15, it just sounds right. So here it is unaffected. And let's unbypass that and give some nice rock bass. So notice how it's got all the growl and it's focused. When I turn it off, it's a little more low endy, which is fine and fun to play to, but doesn't always sit in the mix as well. So let's turn it back on. I feel like you can almost hear the tubes. You know, it's really, really great what these companies are able to achieve these days just by plugging your bass into an inexpensive but really great sounding interface to get a killer bass tone. We're going to do that with guitar as well, electric guitar, uh, to create some really fun tones too. Let's lay down this bass track. We'll have some fun. Now we'll start to hear the song come together a little bit more now that bass is in the mix. All right, let's do it. So let's add some guitar tracks to this tune, and I'm just going to plug straight into the Volt, right into channel one. I made sure that I have the instrument button on because that's going to compensate for a lower output signal from an instrument like this. That's important to know. Um, and I also threw the vintage button on as well, just to kind of, you know, warm up the sound a little bit. Why not? It's there. So we want to use it. Now, when we play an electric guitar or plug an electric guitar straight into a mixing console or an interface, it's pretty dry and not very exciting. doesn't sound much like a guitar you would expect to hear, all right? But we're going to take care of that by adding plugins to our signal chain. Now, uh, Universal Audio gives you quite a lot of plugins to add to your session here when you buy Volt, and it's all free. So this company called SoftTube made a bundle where you get a Marshall amp, you get a delay, you get a reverb. So we're using that here if we take a look. And I have the Marshall really, really low gain. It's almost off. We're going to turn that on. 
Starting to sound like a guitar already, right? Now we'll put some reverb on over here. And why not add some delay as well? Here we go. We had a little dip in volume there. We can kind of make up for some of it here, maybe here. Now it's sounding like a vibey Americana track. All right, so we're gonna use this sound. We're gonna play a little part against what we already have and to start really coming together. All right, so we're gonna throw another electric guitar on this track, and I'm just coming out of my Strat here, going into Volt. We're adding a little bit of compression this time, because I want some of the notes to really retain sort of an even quality, right? And I think it worked out, it's gonna work out well for this. We're gonna also use the same plug-in setup that we had to create our first tone, but you'll notice that just by changing guitars and maybe a pickup setting here or there is really gonna help differentiate our electrics in the mix, and that's a really, really important thing. So the Strat sounds great. <laughs> Yeah, there's a lot of reverb and such going on, but it's gonna work for this tune. So let's do it, let's cut this electric. All right, so we gotta throw a vocal on this track now, and I have the same mic I was using to record the acoustic with, which is the Loughton LA220. Great, inexpensive mic, sounds really, really good. Uh, we're powering it up with Phantom Power, we got the red button on there. We're in channel two, I have the vintage button engaged, so we wanna get maximum warmth into this vocal. Uh, we don't have any compression right now, and we're gonna de uh, demo that a little bit here in just a second. But remember, compression's bringing those soft sounds louder and the louder sounds down, so you have this nice sort of even tone, this is really, or even signal, and this is really nice for vocals because it helps it sit in the mix in a such a way. So let me pull the pop filter up here, and I'll adjust my mic a little bit. There we go. And as soon as you hear me talk, hey, 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 I kick that first vocal um, preset in on the compressor, and it really brings my voice to the forefront. Again, it's bringing everything up and everything down, making it nice and even. And this would sound good if I'm singing like this. Maybe a nice sort of even punchy rock vocal. Maybe like that. We'll take it down a smidge. Now just because it says guitar, that's just a reference. Um, it's not that you have to use it on guitar. Um, this compression sounds pretty good on my voice. I'll tell you what I feel like when I put the compressor on. Yeah. I use the next one, which is called Fast for this track. And the, the first verse of their, first lyric of the chorus goes, I'll tell you what it feels like when they forget about you. And you can hear that the vocal is nice and smooth. So that's a really nice thing to get on the way into recording. Um, and we can do that effectively with Volt. So there you have it. Very easy to dial in a really great sounding vocal with an inexpensive, great sounding mic. So let's drop it on the track. Everybody tells me to move on But I'm still holding on I'm still holding on I'm still holding on 
All right, so there's my little walkthrough of the Volt 276 for you, and I think it's a great option for guitar players. You know, a lot of times guitar players, we just want to plug in and go. This allowed me to do that really easily, especially if you already have some guitar plugins in your recording software, or if you don't, you of course can download them, which I'll get into in a second. But uh, some of the things they did great is they gave you a MIDI in and output on this, so you can hook your keyboard up to it and play synth sounds, drum beats, that sort of thing. And of course, it's just super easy to use a headphone jack, which I used a lot. Um, and another pro, one of the things I thought was great was that they finally throw in a USB cable or two in the box. You know, in the Apollos, they wouldn't include Thunderbolt cables, which was always kind of a pain. Um, but love the fact that they threw in a cable as well. And as far as the software bundle, there's so much available that's really, really good. The only thing that really tripped me up was that you have to download each one, and each one is tied to a company, so that means you got to do an account with a e password, email, all that kind of stuff. And if it's not in your wheelhouse to do that, it can be really frustrating. So beware. You know, um, take an afternoon and really try to do one or two plugins at a time. Write your passwords down, all that kind of stuff. I'm not telling you anything you don't know, but I know some of the viewers of this channel will get frustrated with those computer crazy fangled things, right? So all in all, great box, great line. I'm so excited for them to put something out like this because it doesn't, uh, it tells us what the future may hold as well. And if you're into recording, that's a whole other ball of wax. But I'll put links to all of the Volt products. I'll put links to all the gear I use, like everything from my mic to the headphones. So you guys can see it. I try to use, aside from the guitars, nothing under a thousand dollars or even 500 bucks for that much matter so check it out there's lots of links and if you got any questions about this stuff drop me a line in the comments of course i'd love it if you subscribe to the channel rang the bell and all that kind of stuff but always reach out to me at coreycongilio.com happy to talk to you about your next gear purchase whether it be a recording interface guitar or whatever all right hope you dug it i'll see you back i'll see you back next time next week yeah i'll see you next week thanks